everybody, welcome back to Contest Prep University. We are in episode two in our series on best prep foods. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson. We're going to turn to carbs. And I know right away, I think people are going to think glycemic index and quality and whole food versus processed food, which is the best place to start. Um, but I, I, I think this really is a fulcrum or a pivot point for people in how they feel. If you're eating a lot of processed, low glycemic, or I should say high glycemic kind of foods, again, maybe for convenience, as we talked about with protein once in a while, maybe for palatability and just that craving, if you can control them well. But man, when you switch to some of those old whole food staples, you just instantly feel better. I was talking to a client about this this week. And uh, even just getting rid of, you know, things like wheat, even if you don't have a gluten intolerance, it's just, wow, I feel better eating more oats and rice and potatoes and some of those more natural, closer to the ground things. But uh, what are what are your elements of thought when it comes to carbs? Yeah, so very similar to protein, the less processed, the better. So, you know, we'll where a lot of people get held up on this too, one of the biggest points I wanted to talk about is when you start venturing into low carb territory in terms of searching for foods that are low carb, or you're trying to squeeze out the lowest calorie bread or the lowest calorie wheat wrap that you can find, that's usually where you're in the danger zone. So, you know, nutrition can be 20% off on the label, if I remember right, for um, legally, like food yeah. accuracy yeah. legally. If they're so, even abiding by that, <laughs> if, if they're yeah. even that close. And, and it's almost always at the end of prep, I make a big move down and the person doesn't lose weight. And, you know, this is where most coaches start tracking steps. It's not the steps, it's the food quality <laughs> almost 90% of the time. And it's... um. It's because they're eating that four gram of carb Sara Lee bread, which you can't like there's no way there's bread that big for four carbs. So it's just that they're 20 percent off the other direction or they just haven't gotten caught yet. So Dude, I, I, I had a client this week who had this zero it was zero is in the title, some kind of tortilla. And of course, the ingredients, the first ingredient is whole wheat. And you look at the size of it. First of all, the calories don't even match, uh, you know, even by what's on the label. And of course, they're playing the net carb game. But just factually, I mean, if you did some kind of, you know, calorimeter type type testing, I guarantee that thing that's listed as zero or one or two grams of carbs would be 15 to 20. So you factor a couple of those in a day. And you're exactly right. Just I, I hate, hate, hate that low carb diet food industry. And and you're right. The, the easiest way to get around that is just go to better whole foods, unprocessed, that are easy to track and manage. Right. Absolutely. Also, the accuracy of the food that you may or may not be weighing. So. You know, rice cakes can vary quite a bit because they break. So, you know, maybe not in an off-season scenario, but in a prep scenario, I would definitely start weighing those. And I think that's another big mistake that a lot of people make with carbs. They grab those convenient sources, those dry air foods, and they do weigh less or more than you think they do. And that's what you really have to watch. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the old fruit thing, you know, there's, there's that debate where can I eat fruit? It has sugar or, you know, maybe some people eat too much, but, but what, what do you think and what's your experience about fruit? Yeah, I've changed my ways over the years. I used to, I used to be uh, lower fruit because uh, I felt like it was just good for liver glycogen, but uh, I actually learned that it can turn into muscle glycogen uh, it just takes longer than than typical, but you know it still works at the end of the day. Just like if you were to have a starch. Uh, however, you want to be careful not to get too much fiber. But that fiber from fruit usually isn't as bad as like vegetable fiber, where you're, you know, it can really wreck your gut if you have too much of it. Yeah, it, it's it's more soluble for sure. But what you just said there, every fruit 
has different levels of fructose. It's not a hundred percent fructose. There is some pure, you know, glucose based type sugar, sucralose and so forth and, uh, or sucrose. And so, you know, first of all, you are getting some instant sugar elevation, blood sugar, which can immediately replenish glucose and glycogen in the muscle tissue. But then, as you mentioned, fructose, as it cycles through the body and goes to the liver, if you have a metabolic demand for that energy, you will convert it to glucose. It's not like ethyl alcohol, which is just converted to fat. And so that that's why it tends to be lower glycemic. So I've always been somebody who is okay with fruit. Sometimes it's just a, a better, cleaner way of eating and convenient and obviously healthy. Sometimes though, it's just not going to stick with you as long. I mean, because of the low glycemic nature, some, some people will feel that, but some people just won't. And they would prefer, you know, something like you know, rice or something, which is fine, but certainly a better choice than processed carbs. Absolutely. Also with the fruits, make sure to weigh them because that produce varies a ton, a whole lot. <laughs> and apple can be quite different if, if you're weighing it than from one to another. Absolutely. All right, guys, stay tuned. We're going to turn to fat in episode three. We will see you next time.